This episode of Twin Speaks contains spoilers. Hello and welcome to Twin Speaks, first watch, first listen of The Incredibles 2, starring Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter, Sarah Vowell, Huck Milner, Samuel L. Jackson, and Bob Odenkirk. Written and directed by Brad Bird. I'm your co-host, Pat, and you can find me on Twitter at KidCombo underscore. And I am, of course, joined by my twin brother and co-host. You can find him on social media at Anemonium. On Friday night, he fed some otters. It's Andrew. <laughs> I have watched an otter get fed. I watched an otter eat a full fucking crab <laughs> on a rock. And it was, yeah. I went from not seeing otters at all to seeing two in the last a really weeks. fat otter too like that thing was massive I mean, that was a, long, a big otter whippy tailed yeah. yeah yeah jill wants us to point out that she was the one that called it over yeah she she's like actually, made a point she of saying, actually like, she like <laughs> magically like willed this like summon otter, the yeah. otter out of the she water she didn't a she just like basically got its attention it was like oh shit there's people over there oh that's cool rock i'm gonna, yeah, sit, I'm gonna on that. sit on that rock <laughs> yeah no, fuck you, Jill. <laughs> oh, okay. Edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, this is, of course, for The Incredibles 2, but we'll start off with uh, a little bit of news. So did you hear that Tom... <laughs> <laughs> Every time you read Did You Hear, it sounds I, like uh, Purd from did you, Parks and Rec. Have you, you hear? heard with yeah. Purd? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it should be called. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, so first one is Tom Holland revealed uh, the new Spider-Man sequel title Yeah. in like a kind of goofy instagram video basically yeah. he was like holding he was like doing the video and he's like holding the script in on an yeah. ipad and he just like goes like oh there's nothing to reveal yeah. and then he holds it up and it says like whatever far from, uh, home. Far from home yeah and he's like and then he goes down i mean obviously it's yeah. like i don't of know if it's intentional I think it's just intentional. like knowing stuff that he's spoiled already yeah i don't think it was intentional i think yeah i just love the fact that he was like <laughs> Uh yeah, sorry I don't have anything to announce. Uh, and I'm I we just got the script for the new Spider Man. Like I don't really know how it's gonna work because I'm dead. <laughs> That's a spoiler. And then he goes, <laughs> and here it is, and it's just like the title card. It's like, oh my god, this yeah. kid is gonna get fired so fast. Not, not only did he like spoil the yeah. the working title of this movie, but he like what the fact that he's Infinity dead in too. from yeah. Infinity War. Yeah, <laughs> I just love the fact that like. Oh no! Like he's not going to be in the next Spider-Man. It'll be a clone of Tom Holland, they, right? Because Disney, they have a contingency plan for all this. <laughs> they just have somebody that looks exactly like him, and he's going to have no lines. <laughs> he's basically like one of those cardboard cutouts. And yeah, just like just move him from like, and yeah. they'll just act around him. Yeah, everybody's just interacting yeah. with these cut. Um, well, yeah, I mean Spider-Man CGI anyway, so that's fine. Most of the time, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> oh my um, God, it's but work. with with that title, then, yeah. Uh, we also got news that Jake Gyllenhaal will yeah. be starring as uh, Mysterio. As Mysterio. The, I'm assuming it's going to be like the main antagonist. Yeah, I don't know. I, have well, we, we've I don't, never gotten Mysterio before, have no, we? No. He, I, no, I don't think so. No, I, I don't think so. I thought he was in one of like, the Spider-Man video games, but that might have been it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is going to be weird because like, Mysterio is, he's, I don't know, he's got kind of like weird abilities. Like He's not powered. Yeah, that's right. And he is basically just like a stunt guy that went into yeah, like to be a criminal. I, I think guess it's the same is, as yeah. like most of Spider Man's villains, to be honest. Like, they're not. If you look at the MCU version of the Vulture; it's the same thing. Oh yeah, that's true. So they'll probably do sort of taking from the way that they did the Vulture then, because like in the comics, yeah. he's like a bird. Like yeah, he's, he's, a he's pretty man. much a bird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, like, it goes back and forth. But and I yeah, do, for the most part, he's a bird. I do man. like how they did like Homecoming, where they made him more of like a just a criminal. He kind of got like, yeah, but he's like, fits, f the system. Right? I'm yeah. gonna do this. So I think with Mysterio, then that fits almost exactly into how they're sort of doing that. Because yeah. I mean, we look at Spider Man; it's the same sort of thing, right? Like he was bit by the spider, but mm -hmm. you know, his, his everything's sort of mechanical yeah. in that sense too. And I, I, I. It'd be cool if they made him more like magical, like he has sort of some abilities. But I could just see him as like being a guy that just uses a lot of like smoke and mirrors, literally. Yeah. But, but that is I'm really just, cool. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sort of like disappointed. I just burped. I'm disappointed. <laughs> um, Jake Gyllenhaal is Mysterio because that probably means he's not going to be Batman. And um, yeah. And like I read that they're going to be. This is maybe a segue, but like I read that uh, the new Batman film. Yeah. Is going to be a younger version. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, so not whoever the director I Ben Affleck his name is. No, yeah. So like they might, and that's like obviously like, it changes week to week with this film. Like, yeah, it, I mean it, it really seems like just seem like we've got just, like a director, and he's like, oh, I'm only doing it if so and so is going to be in my movie, yeah. and then it's like, well, that's that didn't happen. Yeah, you know? exactly. So like I don't know if they're doing younger, they'll probably recast him. Who who's the director again for Batman? That's the guy that did uh, Planet, Planet of the Apes, Apes right? Yeah, I, don't I don't remember what his name is. is. Um. But yeah, I mean the fact that we're even getting Mysterio in a Spider-Man movie—that's that's pretty so sick, fucking yeah. rad. I yeah. love it. Like, use all these crazy like um, unknown villains or like lesser-known villains. Like, stay away from like Green Goblin and Hobgoblin uh, yeah. and stuff because yeah. like they're great, but yeah. they've been done. And like, let's get some. Like, he's got he's got like just as many villains as Batman does, and Batman yeah. has like of the most. Like, so that it'd be cool for them to explore yeah. more. Yeah, they've that. got like a good. <laughs> Sort of amount of rogue, rogue gallery kind yeah, of totally. type characters. Matt and Reeves, I, sorry, that's Matt Reeves. Reeves. That's right. Okay, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I think excited. it's cool, and I I like that the, it's a fresher, you know, villain like someone that we haven't seen before. Same with the Vulture. Like, you know, they're keeping this movie interesting by doing things that the other Spider-Man movies didn't do. Yeah. Do you think Gyllenhaal because he had like he's at that age where he could have easily done multiple different superhero movies yeah, yeah, yeah. do you think that he saw keaton and was like Not yeah i want to do yeah. that because like keaton's an academy award-winning actor he's a big big name actor yeah and he did a villain in a spider-man movie yeah that had sony involved like exactly yeah, yeah. so like do you think Hall like looked at that and went yeah do it like that i want to be that well and maybe the other thing too is like um keaton that is is you can do it as a one-off. Yeah, they're probably not bringing Vulture back. No, they maybe are. they are. He's alive, he's and he like in they set him up. Or whatever, and they right? set him up for a sinister they, six. They, and they talk to um, what's his name in while he's in prison, right? Who? What's that end scene? You know, where he's like in the prison, uh, and then like so and so comes up to him. That oh, yeah, guy with the remember. Scottish name, Mac, Mac something. I don't remember what his name remember. is. Anyway, so chances are he's he might not be in the next movie. But he'll be in a movie. But he'll be in a movie in the future. And maybe that's sort of appealing to Jake Gyllenhaal, too, because chances are he's turned down a lot of scripts for superhero movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, sorry. Yeah, the guy at the end is the um, the Scorpion guy. That's right, yeah. I forgot what his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's appealing to him then? You know, yeah. like he sees it where he's like, okay, well, I can do one movie and then, I don't know, down the road we'll or something. We'll see what happens. We'll see yeah. what happens. Maybe they kill me off. I, maybe, like, something happens. You know, whatever. So maybe that's sort of like what, because uh, like I said, like assuming that he's already gotten so many offers to play superheroes, yeah, you you'd assume that like that he probably it's interesting that he would wait, yeah, to do this. It's I think it's the same reason that DiCaprio hasn't done one. Oh yeah, he said because he doesn't like the contract. Yeah, yeah. Uh, commitment because you're not signing for one movie; you're signing for like eight. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. You're doing so maybe like, I'm sure it's the same. I'm sure they just got him because they're like. He's not going to be part of Sinister Six, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll probably just be a one-off. And he's an interesting enough character yeah. that there's some depth to him, at least. So, like, yeah. No, I'm excited. I it's think. sort of in comic turns, too. They don't really... I mean, Mysterio's not the guy that shows up all the time, too. Yeah, but that's the thing, is that, like... I but he is, like, a remember him guy, coming. Too. Yeah, like, they... He's written in a way where, like, it's convenient for the story, obviously. Like, he's at... Not street level villain, but he's like a good villain, and then he's written in a way where he's like this mastermind villain. That's yeah. sort of like the reason, like he, like I was, he has sort of the ability to also like nullify some of Spider Man's powers based yeah. on like yeah. this mist that he has. So like there is ways that he is written where he's like basically punch for punch able to go toe to yeah. toe with him. So like, and he's sort of interesting because he appears and reappears or disappears yeah. rather, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of like with you know, sort of whenever. Yeah. Whenever it's convenient, I guess, in writing. But yeah, so that's cool. Um, I'm excited for that. Yeah, me too. I mean, that we just found that out like today, really. Yesterday, maybe? Yeah, yesterday. Um, okay, so moving on. Uh, Pete Docter and Jennifer Lee are set to lead Pixar Disney Animation. So they're taking over for uh, John Lasseter, who's the guy that like last year he like took a leave of absence because, you know, he had some... Uh, uh, missteps as they they like said in the hollywood reporter mm -hmm. where he left a lot of disney pixar employees feeling uncomfortable and disrespected 
So he ended up leaving. Like he took a leave of absence, and now now he's gone. Yeah. So now they have it took him a full year. Yeah, it took him a full oh year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so now they have Pete Doctor and Jennifer Lee, who are taking over. Um, I said Lee. That was funny there. Lee. Lee. <laughs> uh, and Pete Doctor is known for Toy Story, Toy Story Two, Monsters Inc., Wally, Up, Inside Out. I mean, like he's he's basically all like the amazing um, Pixar movies. He's he's what was either his role written though? for or oh, directed. Okay, okay. Uh, like most of those he's like direct directed wow. and written. Um, and then Jennifer Lee is known for Wreck It Ralph, um, which she wrote, uh, Frozen, which she directed and wrote, and the new one wow. that's coming out soon, and the Wrinkle in Time. Sorry, the new Frozen. Yeah, there's a Frozen too. Apparently, oh. I didn't know that until I looked at like her IMDb. I, didn't know that. I was like, oh, there is maybe a... it's in. I mean, there's pre-production. Or it could be. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It could be like 2020 or something when it comes out. Yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, I was reading, like, a bunch of comments and stuff and, like, a bunch of news about this. And it seemed like that was the, like, best possible choice for the direction of Disney Pixar that they want to go in. Right. Is to have these two as creative sort of type creative people that are, yeah. like, yeah, exactly. All right. I mean, like, I don't know. It's, it's, I know. It's, it's like, 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 if, if, it means if like, they were okay, so well, involved in, like, yeah, those... Chances are they were already like, leaders in this sort of yeah, realm like of what the Disney hell Pixar. What was he doing anyways? So now it's like they're just now sort of on paper, right. you know, yeah. professionally known as that. Yeah, they probably been I'm doing it for a year already. Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they were probably like acting directors, right? Um, so that's kind of cool. Yep. So I, I do like that, that um, they've got two, you know, and two people that are known for sort of the greatest things in Pixar. Yeah. Um, but speaking of Disney, uh, Disney has now bid or outbid Comcast with a bid of $71.3 oh billion dollars for 21st Century Fox. There's not even that many people on Earth. That is insane. No, that's right. That is so many people. And we're 70 months. So, so many <laughs> money. <laughs> so, oh, my God. The money. <laughs> I I mean. This is insane. It's sort of oh overwhelming to like, think so, the amount of money that it, they have to bid to get this company, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean they're not getting yeah. it. Yet. They're not getting it all at once. I, even if they get like it says like it's in like seven of that is like what. They're oh saying my god! Too. They're no. like seventy one point three billion in cash. It's like no. how do you count that in cash? That I is, mean, yeah, that's just like a term. They're just gonna transfer just gonna money buy to buy a sh- like point three billion of that is used to buy the school buses that the rest of the seventy one billion <laughs> yeah. is gonna be hauled around in. <laughs> like that is so much money and outbid by a significant amount. Yeah, so like the original. Bid by if Comcast. it was like 0. 0.3 million, I'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah okay. But like, they, like it's price right outbid by 6.3 billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. That is an insane amount. Oh my god. So it wasn't like them prices right. I'll never see 71.3 billion of anything. No. Like there's probably like, like when you go maybe on a beach, rice? probably nah, no, yeah, yeah, probably rice. not. Right? Like yeah. there's that's an insane amount of money. That's an insane Sand? number in general. <laughs> yeah. Oh so god. I don't know what that means then for. uh that means that means we're for, or like fantastic all, part. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, X-Men. think of like all the the titles owned by 21st yeah. Century Fox. Now, if this goes through, because oh, this is what still if they open, trashed, right? What if they just trashed the X Men movie that's supposed to come out, Dark Phoenix? Oh, they might just throw it right in the dumpster. Yeah, because I heard, I heard, new. I was reading that like. <laughs> I was reading and heard, which means that I saw a video on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Someone told me. Yeah, somebody told me <laughs> that uh, Dark Phoenix was like, has already gone to test screenings. Yeah. And it's getting fucking dumped on. Yeah. It that's... is trash. And they said, like, if it's trash, like, if it's getting. Because, like, you never know with these movies. Because, like, they'll test awfully and then they'll come out and they'll do really well like they just you don't know because it depends on the yeah. person it depends on what idiot they picked up off. well and, and like the but, test screenings usually it's like someone tweeting out being like this is the greatest movie ever and send then, every single x-men oh, movie yeah. you know oh, that, man like if, those when, kind of the amount of times that you see like oh yeah tweets about a movie being like this is the best superhero movie of all time yeah. and it comes out and it's got like 17 yeah, percent. yeah yeah no it's not Anyways, I think that if it if this goes through and depending on like how soon it goes through, why don't they just dump Dark Phoenix and then the next like in Avengers five, I guess. Yeah. Was in like Fantastic Four and X Men. <laughs> oh my god. Cause like they're already setting up Avengers four. Yep. Spoiler. For to be like uh Assuming Captain Marvel, yeah. Yeah. Black Panther. 
like Doctor Strange, Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I don't want to say his name. Tom Holland, and then Doctor Strange. Ant- <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp, all right. as like the new Avengers team. Yeah. So like, I can't imagine them shoving them in there, there because they're already like done production on that movie. Oh yeah, I think they. So like, uh, what if they just like record? Done. Like, if this went through, and they recorded like a, like post credit scene with like Fantastic Four or something, that would be so sick. Even yeah, not right. even just like Fantastic Four, just like a picture of the Baxter Building. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> or like, I yeah. would scream. I Someone's would scream like standing so under there going like, "Oh, I wonder what's in there." <laughs> yeah. And then they like go inside oh. the window, and it's just him, and he's like. His flexible <laughs> and arms, he's and he's just waving going, them around. Oh, how do I control these and, things? And then he goes, "Invisible Woman's here too." <laughs> yeah, <and he laughs> but you can't her see her. Accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> he just like wh- and then accidentally he, knocks her down. He like shocks her like in Deadpool too. <laughs> <laughs> just appears, and it's Jessica Alba again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be so great. Anyways, that's realistic. Yeah, but pretty much. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I can't see like what. They got creative control again. Like they could just well dump so, it completely. I mean, they could. They're pretty much. I. I honestly, I would not be surprised if that movie, because of like all the shitty reviews that it's getting, the Dark Phoenix one, yeah, that they just go fuck it, we'll start brand new with that one, yeah, trash it completely. It's not their money. It's not their money anymore. Yeah. They they own the rights to it, but like they can do whatever they want with it yeah. now, assuming. Yeah. yeah. So all these actors have probably been paid. Oh yeah, I mean, everybody's they're... been paid, and then they all make because they're money done building. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I would uh, assume then that they would just. Like, start planning for the next sort of section of, like, X-Men, Fantastic Four, yeah. whatever titles that they have. Because I'm, su- I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there's other titles that we don't even know about that don't get talked about that aren't sort of as big as the Fantastic Four. Well, and yeah, X-Men. There's, like, there's, like, the smaller, like, alien race stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. There's so many, like, different alien like races scrolls. that they can't use. Yeah, scrolls are, like, split down the middle. Like, they can use scrolls, but they can't use super scrolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, Which I always thought was funny. Yeah, like so who made that? Like, are they sitting? In I a honestly see it where like, they go like hey, oh, nothing super. Yeah, <laughs> there's like, like one guy whose only he's job just, like, is writing like, scrolls, and he's like, make sure it doesn't say super. Okay, not super scroll. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. I don't know. I just see them like yeah. doing it sort of in the future, trashing Did it, they planning for the future. X Men, you think? Uh, I they recast... maybe they would give them the option. Hey, yeah, how many of these people want to continue? Cast, though, like, I, and yeah. that's the thing is like they have like. I think a lot of people would love for that yeah. cast to stay sort of on. Yeah. But, I mean, you don't know. Like, maybe they just say, like, how many of you want to stay? Do you want to keep getting paid yeah. at this time by Disney, who has, like, way more fucking money than everybody else? I mean, they have less money now. They have less than 70 million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's, like, all their money? And now they're just yeah. like, oh, incredible. No, I'm sure they us. have, like, triple that amount. Oh, probably. And that's yeah. just overseas in a Swiss bank account right Yeah, now. right. In cash. Uh, okay, so moving on, it chapter two has begun uh, production, according to James McAvoy. Um, that's pretty much it. Like he posted yeah. a picture, and they were like, oh, "Started filming." Oh, he did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. it was like on Instagram or something. <laughs> so I think like that's uh, so basically I wanted to include that because we had talked about it chapter two, um, maybe like two episodes ago, yeah, but we hadn't really like said who was being played by who. So James McAvoy plays uh, adult Bill, right? Um, Jessica Chastain plays Beverly. Obviously, Bill Hader is Richie. Yeah, that's um, good. I like that. Yeah, I like that one too. Who's that one's kind of a perfect one. James Ransone is Eddie. Uh, Andy Bean is Stanley. Isaiah Mustafa is Mike, and Jay Ryan is Ben. Oh, okay, I do not. Yeah. Know oh, okay. I mean, you like look up these guys' names and you're like, "Oh yeah, no, that's a perfect cast." Like, they Ryan? look almost exactly like they I, would. I want. only remember like half of the kids' names, too. So, yeah, right. Like, I was I'm like looking at these going. I was uh, like, "Fuck me, which one's Ben? And which one's Bill?" Yeah. I don't recognize that guy either. Okay. Yeah, that's He's funny. An Australian soap opera actor. Whoa. All right. Pulling out the big guns. If that's him. <laughs> remember yeah. that thing we had read where like they asked the kids who they were going to play? Yeah. What if like one kid chose this Australian as like a act. joke he's like I don't know man uh fucking something hey, Ryan. Ryan I don't know turns yeah, out to be like an Australian, Australian yeah <laughs> maybe he just watches them that'd be cool though all right looking at it now yeah because I'm curious I don't like remember a lot of these kids okay well this is not even showing the kids first though. yeah they're showing like all the extras yeah that's, that's stupid sure. and Bill Skarsgård who you don't even see his face really <laughs> Yeah, I know, but he is the clown, I guess. Ah, yeah. I think it's so the many clown. things in Deadpool too, too. 
briefly. Right, Bill, <laughs> Bill is who? Um, Bill Hader is Richie. No, no, no. Oh, Bill the Kid. James McAvoy. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah I, like I thought that. that one was good. That's I actually remember that kid. Yeah. And then Ben is... <laughs> ben was the heavier set kid. Right. Who's being played by just a beautiful man. <laughs> J. Ryan. <laughs> Who got is slimmed hilarious. up. <laughs> yeah. That is the most classic trope in like yeah. aged movies. Oh, he was ugly or he was large. Yeah. And now he's beautiful. Well, there's even like the... Like, the idea that he just played... Imagine uh, Hurley from... Like, if he just stayed big, and it was, yeah. like, Hurley from Lost ended oh, up playing that'd him. That would be so good. Because that would that be a trope, so too. It's like, that would be great. But, and like, that'd I... be like, oh, he's still kind of big. Yeah. Like, Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, a lot of these are just... Like, James Ranson is Eddie, and Eddie was... I Like, I get that, like, the main actors get bigger name actors, and then yeah. they'll be, like, lo- like, the Stanleys and the... Ben and Mike are all like, let. Well, I mean, he, Isaiah Mustafa is like a recognizable person. I mean, he's too. from like The Wire, and was he in The Wire? Yeah, yeah. I think he was like one of the main characters. I've never actually seen The Wire, but I do <laughs> yeah, I recognize him that. sort of from that. And then obviously he's like the red. Um, I was gonna red, say Red Bull, but it's Old Spice. Yeah, <laughs> Red Spice. Red Spice. <laughs> Bull spice. The deodorant you can drink. <laughs> oh, gross! Oh my god! Yeah, it's not, <laughs> but you know, well, I mean, you could. Like... It comes in a gel. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, god. It was a bad. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god! Whatever five. I don't listeners want. I'm not gonna listen to this. Uh, fucking gone now. Uh, okay. Well, moving on. Uh, Creed two got a trailer. Yep. I actually really like that trailer. I it, was it was a good like, trailer. It was a I, the trailer. music matches up so well with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was cool. But, I'm excited for that movie. They were like, "Hey, what's what do people love about Rocky?" And they're like, <laughs> "Training montages." Yes, let's do a training <laughs> montage. And there's three of them. There's more than one training montage in that trailer. It's I God. I hope the movie isn't just training montages. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, we get it. The stakes are higher, but oh my this he literally he's just him punching a bag, him training with his like coach, and then him punching underwater. How is he staying underwater? Oh uh, yeah. It looks like his feet are stuck to the like the yeah, but, bottom of the and pool. And like it doesn't there's like no evidence of him like yeah, somehow staying there. It looks there. like it's they just, just like CGI'd water punching. into him punching the air and they're like Slow. you have to do it slower. Yeah, slower, come on. Yeah. So he's just punching Water. Oh they're like, well, God. put them in a they're pool. So, and like, I mean, like the one nice thing about the training montage is they like match it up with Kendrick, like the entire. Oh yeah, time. yeah, yeah. It's him punching to the beat, and I was like, that's sick. But then of what? Like it was like it. DNA or something, right? Yeah, and then <laughs> just the fact that it's him just like now, I would say fifty, <laughs> like a strong half of that trailer is him just punching training like there is no other punching happening you've been punching this entire time i know like, i feel like every time, time, time i have to say punching i have to actually punch and you bump just... my head back and forth <laughs> oh. i mean apart from that like i thought it was a great trailer like, a... i thought it was yeah. like, a well made trailer let my... you don't really i mean you understand like what the point of the movie is yeah. but like other than that it doesn't really give that much away drago's in it awesome. too yeah that's cool that was kind of a nice surprise yeah. so yeah the... that looks cool i think and like i love in the trailers of the new Mission Impossible movie, it's Henry Cable just punching the crap out of somebody. And I love how hard that punch looks. And it looks like this in this movie, too. Oh, which yeah, is totally. so great. And that's why the last one was so great, too, is that it actually looks like a hard punch. Yeah. They actually, like, sh- I mean, I know that he actually gets punched in, the- in Creed 1. Yeah. And then there's, like, he's done how long of training, obviously, yeah, right? Yeah, like, huge. I mean, he's... He's trained to be a. Bo- it's kind of like that yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal, that Southpaw one, where he like trained to be a lefty boxer yeah. for so long. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing. So like yeah. him looking like he's actually like, because he, he physically has been training to do that. For yeah, so he's long. a legit yeah. guy. Um, but yeah, I lo- it looks great. I mean, I'm sure to be even if it's fine, like it'll probably do fine. Like oh, yeah. it's still even that trailer, like it's shot so nice, like it looks great. You can understand Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Um. He doesn't. I don't think Michael B. Jordan has like a ton of dialogue in the movie. It seems like it's a lot of like exposition to set up what the movie's about, which is fine. It's a trailer, but yeah, yeah, it looks good. Cool. Uh, next one, Scoop McNary <laughs> got added to like the gigantic 
cast of, cast of yeah. Quentin Tarantino is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which seemingly has an, an unlimited infinite budget. Yeah. Oh my god! God, yeah. they do, where, where is this money coming from? It's, like I don't uh, understand. <laughs> it's from the Disney buyout. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. seventy-one billion dollars. So they're like, I we'll get you your money. Yeah, I would say seventy billion of that money is spent on Brad Pitt. <laughs> And the rest of it is split among the 17 other A-list actors. No, and then, movie. yeah, and then there's, like, a big chunk of it just goes to Al Pacino. Al Pacino and Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, we could yeah. go, like, Margot Robbie is also one of the highest paid actresses like in Hollywood, Like, they're getting, like, A-list, like, oh my, like yeah. top build uh, actors. It's unbelievable. I'm not even going to fucking say all of them. No. Because it's so stupid. I'm not going to say that many characters. There's so many different actors in this oh, movie. Boy. It is ridiculous. And, like, we talk about it every week because they, like... See, like Burt Reynolds is in this as well. And yeah. Like, oh my god. I, know, yeah. I bet Burt Reynolds is gonna be uh, Billy Bell. Uh, uh, Manson. Yeah. Charles well, Manson. I think you that's. Think so? uh, yeah. He's you look at him now. Though. Yeah, but you, well, is he gonna be younger or is he gonna be like Manson when Manson got now. caught? Well, even when he got caught, because he he's not. dead now. He died in prison, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. But like, he. He was like youngish at the time. He's probably like forty. Oh, okay. Maybe it won't be him. Maybe it'll be like uh, I can see Leo. It being like, I don't think it'd be Leo. It'd what if it's Al- Scoop McNary? No, I don't know. Yeah, he could play that. Though. <laughs> yeah, totally. He's a, he's a little crazy. Damian Lewis is in this. Jesus oh yeah. Christ. Tim Roth. Oh my. Like oh Tim Roth and Kurt Russell have been in a lot. I mean Kurt Russell. There you go. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Boy. Yeah. Um. Uh. Remastered Dragon Ball Z movies are coming to theaters. Yeah. This fall. I'm not sure. They haven't really said where they're going to be in theaters. Like, if it's, it'll place, probably be in the yeah. U.S. A bunch of big places. But that's kind of cool. Yep. They're all going to be remastered. So. Yep. Um. There's enough of them too. Oh yeah. Well, did it say Makes which one, that, or does it say like? No, all I of just them. said like it was sort of a general thing. Like. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that like, this maybe means that they're trying to generate a little bit more buzz for like a new project they've coming been out, like talking perhaps? about doing a live action yeah other live action so maybe this is like a hey maybe. everybody remember dragon ball z yeah i don't but I, like, yeah i, I don't feel like dragon ball z isn't something it's that like, struggles with yeah, being in the public eye. it definitely has like a special nostalgia factor to it for oh so yeah many people like our age yeah especially like i never really watched it all that much like i watched it if it was on but like other than that Okay, uh, we'll buzz through the last two here. Stephen Merchant got cast as a Gestapo agent in Taika Waititi's new movie, um, Jojo Rabbit, which is yeah. like a World War II satire. That's hilarious. Yeah. Thinking of uh, Stephen Merchant and Taika Waititi together. Have is... they ever done anything together? I don't think no, so. Don't think so, so. But like, like, I like that pairing. Oh, yeah. Like, that's he's a... so funny. He's like... That's going to be good. Arguably the funnier duo funnier of the duo in ricky gervais and him so yeah. like i really like that yeah i like that too uh sam mendez uh has reportedly been hired to direct a world war one movie titled 1917 um which is his apparently it's his official screenwriting debut right which i didn't realize yeah, i thought maybe he had like, written is skyfall the, oh maybe this is just like um like uh what's his face ryan reynolds yeah, right? right. Like, like where he's like had, had on the yeah, cat. like exactly. he's done enough to be on it. Yeah, um, and it's going to be co-written by uh, Christy Wilson Cairns, which uh, she's apparently done like a bunch of TV writing. Oh, okay. So, which is interesting. Uh, so that starts in early 2019, and that is for um, Steven Spielberg's company Amblin Partners, cool. which is um, where American Beauty came from. Oh, like okay. that was done from right. for Steven Spielberg. Spiel- yeah, so right. Which will be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so the last thing I want to say is too that this last week, um, Wonder Woman. Yep. Did we get the first? Was it the this week or is it? We got the first image for the new movie, right? Yeah. Night. Well, uh, Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah. And we got that picture of spoiler. Um, what's his face? Steve Trevor. Yeah. Which is cool. So he, I mean. I don't think any, I don't think anybody seeing the movie was like he's dead. No, that's it. Especially an actor like that too. There's oh, no way no, they like, signed him on for like one movie. One Can movie? you imagine? Yeah. No, yeah. he's gonna be around. I think for a while, yeah. at least for this. Like you know, say it's like three movies if that you do movies, for Wonder yeah. Woman. He's probably gonna be around for all. Three I could see them doing in some sort of direction. Yeah. I could see them doing like a trilogy where yeah, like World War One, eighty four, and then current. Yeah. Or just 
after. So they're sort of bringing just after everything Donna up. Donna Justice, because like Donna Justice is supposed to be her first like public appearance, right? In a long time, so like I can't see them doing it before that. It yeah. just wouldn't work. But again, they I know that they're sort of like trying to get away from these movies altogether. So yeah, I don't know. And Wonder Woman seems to be the one that's really, uh, really hitting it. Yeah, for DC. Yeah. Which yep. is cool. That, I'm, I'm happy. That, that's, that's I'm excited about out. that and Aquaman. Oh yeah, I totally. Think that's it. I think. Oh, that's and cool. Matt Reeves, but that's yeah, I, Matt I Reeves. They're pressing whatever. The, yeah, they're gonna be pressing the fucking reset button on this, and it's gonna happen. I bet it's gonna ha- like I'm assuming that like San Diego Comic Con will get just like a whole new slate of stuff. Yeah, like I can't imagine. Like we'll probably get like Green Lantern type mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. and some other stuff, but like I can't imagine it's gonna be. Like, we'll look at it then and compare it to now, and it'll be completely different. I think so. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Which makes me happy. Yep. They need that's, to. That's I think the they direction need they to need like, to go in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They need to fucking blow it up. Okay. The Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2. Uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Yep. Uh, So they, first of all, like, they smashed the animated film opening weekend record with 180 million. Yeah, that's insane. That's and it beat it by a significant amount too. Like yeah. it was like when I think I saw it, it was like over 15 million dollars or yeah. something. Or maybe it was closer to Like 70. it wasn't them it was just sort of like, like reaching no, that it, was it was like, like, they were like it was a big amount. It up. But I get th- this movie is a sequel to a movie that came out like 15 years ago. Yeah. So like you get a lot like a lot of people our age going like finally. Yeah, yeah. Um now it's the the eighth highest domestic opening for any film ever. Yeah. Uh, and then number two for this weekend was Ocean's 8 with 19.5 million. And then number three was uh, Tech, which opened with um, 14.6. <laughs> which, I mean, like, you compare People that just to 180 oh, million. Yeah, you're like, oh, God, what the change. hell? Yeah. They're, like, laughing down at these I mean, guys. that in, like, the first hour. 180 million back into that bank of uh, yeah, 71 yeah. billion. Well, that's what we were saying, like... <gasps> And them oh, making man, that they're huge not bid, short of money, and, and they're like, uh, "Fuck it, like yeah. we'll wait for this Incredibles yeah. two run of like six months yeah. in the theaters to yeah. really cover our ass." Yeah. Oh man, and yeah. like you look at something like Ocean's Eight and Tag, and yeah. those are doing well. Like Ocean's Eight is good, we liked it. Yep, yeah. but I think the cast list on that is definitely why people are going to see that movie. Totally. Tag, same thing. Yeah. That movie is hot garbage, and the reason people are going to see it is because it's people got want to see a Jake Johnson really and Hannibal Buress and yeah. John Hamm and those John guys. Hamm, like, yeah, Ed that's Helms. a huge, yeah. yeah, same thing. Yeah. So yeah, Incredibles yeah, two, big, big. Um. So yeah. Uh. So that's written directed by Brad Bird, who obviously did the the first one. Yeah. Um. And starring Craig T. Nelson, Holly yeah. Hunter from the original with uh, Samuel L. Jackson. And then Sarah Vowell and Huck Milner and Bob Odenkirk yeah. as sort of like the new people in the movie. Yeah. I, like, I love Bob o- Odenkirk, yeah, I first too. of all. His character was like exactly like, like, like it looked yeah. just like. But I think it was done on purpose, obviously. But yeah. I thought he was great. He was good. Um, what really threw me off in this movie was like the pre-movie thing that they did. Okay. Where it's Samuel Jackson and Holly Hunter and Craig T. Nelson – standing in front of the camera going like we know it's been 15 years right you're welcome i was like whoa you guys are giant assholes for saying this <laughs> we would have been asking this for 15 years and you're like yes 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 okay yeah. okay it, it takes did not time, take yeah right? it does not take 15 years no. to make an animated movie in the exact same style as the last animated movie. no exactly i mean the, they, the, the whole point of the movie is that it, like it continues directly after so costumes are the same and i know yep. you have to like draw they were like it has to be drawn and then it has to be redrawn and then it has to be drawn again yeah. and it's like we know how animated movies work yeah. this isn't rocket science and they were like you're welcome it's like we got a here. fucking baby boss 2 before we got an incredibles 2 baby boss <laughs> it doesn't yeah, take true. that yeah, fucking long that right long. like i was like i kind of made me like not I'm angry i was just yeah. like uh. yeah <laughs> I did the same thing. Yeah. I thought it was kind of annoying because it's like, this is a movie everybody's been asking for since the other one yeah. had come out, really. So it's interesting that they planned, I mean, assuming that they planned for it to be released however long in the future. Yeah. You know, maybe it wasn't 15 years to start with, but maybe it was like fucking 10 years or something, right? Yeah. Like they did this on purpose, assuming. Yeah. And I they're think- like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get Incredibles 2. We know people have been asking for it, but 
right when people are about to forget about it, we're going to bring it back up. Yeah. And maybe that's I don't understand. Too. Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't really get it. And like, yeah, that's the thing is that we've gotten like other animated sequels. I mean, how many Tor stories have we gotten since then? Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Anyways. I mean, we got a <laughs> Dory movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right? <sighs> Mostly, I just feel like kind of used a little bit yeah totally that's like what, younger that's mostly me, what it feels younger like. me who really enjoyed the movie uh loved it so much right now older me is going like man i fucking love nostalgia I think, yeah i think i'm they gonna just watch had, this movie i just don't think they had an intention of making a sequel no i don't think so either i think that they made incredibles one and it finishes in a spot where they're like they're back to being superheroes yeah no, no sorry else. <laughs> um they, I think, had no intention of being like, yeah, they're superheroes again. They're going to continue to fight crime this time as a family. And they're like, here's a really dumb villain that they'll kill. Or not kill. They'll, he's not Batman. They'll put him away. Yeah. Um, and Catch. then they were like, wow, people actually want to see what happens. Let's think about it. And then Brad Bird probably just got busy with other shit. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I need some money. I need, like, maybe I'll do this. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the guy's like uh, incredibly good incredibly gifted he's a, he wrote writer, and directed this yeah that's crazy like he's he's sort of an insane human being like the guy's yeah. unbelievably creative very cool but so yeah I, I don't know like the whole idea of them waiting this long kind of confuses me like i i mean maybe they were like you know what to give the second one the justice that it deserves let's wait a little bit let's yeah. sit on it maybe like maybe that was the whole thing maybe he had only signed a contract for one movie Disney Pixar wasn't interested in doing another one. So the whole idea was just to them to eventually do it or maybe eventually not do it. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Either way, 15 years later and this movie is like, okay, so now we'll get into what we actually think about it. Yeah, other yeah. than feeling like we got used a little bit or yeah. like run around. It was unbelievable. It was fantastic. Really it was a it. great, yeah. great movie. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if this movie ends up being in people's, sort of top five at the end of the year you know like if it ends up going and winning something at the oscars for best yeah. animated like it was it was fantastic it was a great movie i think characters were well fleshed out yeah. the plot was easy to follow as a disney disney pixar movie yeah. has yep yeah. and i felt like the exposition okay so the exposition for me was one of my favorite parts it was low like it wasn't a lot of it no like, exactly but they don't they didn't need to but they did it in such an interesting way so they did it through the, you know, like that kid who sees what, or Violet, is yeah. that her name? Yeah. Yeah. Like without the mask. Yeah. And they're like, you know, they're just telling the story through him yeah. uh, talking to the other guy. Yeah. And, and it's I was like, like oh, it's that a was limited, so cool. It's like a limited perspective and yeah. it's limited amount too. Like yeah. they're like, here's three minutes of devoted exposition. Like you don't need a lot because it continues immediately after. Yeah. But I'm sure they just count on like. A certain amount of population being like, I've never seen Incredibles 1, but I'll go see this. And then they'll be yeah. like, okay, I'm caught up. Like, so, that's all you need. And because the plot is almost identical to Incredibles 1, yeah. it's just like slightly switched. Yep. That it is easy to follow. Yeah. But what they do is they expand so much on that universe and they like expand on. I think one of the things that I would have loved to see more in Incredibles 1 is like more of the heroes, more, ex like more of that world and this one was like yeah we heard here's like a bunch here's like five or six different heroes and then they sort of all have like they pretty keep like producing standard more of them yeah too. and pretty have like standard powers but like this is them using them and it's like sick that's awesome that's what you want to see really you this go is what i want movie. out of you a superhero see movie. sort of like yeah, the creative exactly. side of of these guys who are like coming up with these yeah. ideas and we want to see some of those. And like the fact that some of them weren't like masters at their powers because they've yeah, been in hiding right? and shit. That's sweet. <laughs> the guy, well, that guy was just, <laughs> he burnt Sometimes magma. it's indigestion. Yeah. 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 I was like, that's such an old dad joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's indigestion. Yeah. It was um, pretty funny. Void was sweet. Yeah. Uh, Brick was my favorite though. <laughs> Anytime he talked, I was like, this is not a real human's voice. Yeah. There's no way there's a legit person like in a sound booth going, you want me to do it again? <laughs> okay. I'm a prick. <laughs> <laughs> like there's no way this is, that was just them typing into Google his lines and then just picking different voices. Yeah. Right. 
Like how you can change Siri's accent. Oh Same yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were like, okay, but that one is <laughs> that we'll one move on to weird. the next one. Sound like this one, like he's been hit in the head a little too many times. <laughs> like he's strong, but like not that defensive. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's he's really good at breaking things with his head. <laughs> yeah, but like the, tr- the you know the brain trauma is really yeah. getting to him. So he was cool, and then like all the other cools, and I still stand by the fact that like Samuel Jackson's Frozone is the best, coolest power set. He's like exactly how you would expect any like ice powered here, like Iceman in mm-hmm. X Men to behave. Like he is so cool, and he seemed like such a master of his powers. And like I just did the animation with my hands. Yeah, you also said a Frozen was cool. I know what I said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <Like that>. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like he's such like a cool character too. The way you like works with the kids and like almost takes out in that entire team yeah. while protecting the kids and like guiding them. Like he's such a cool superhero. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did the eyebrow thing, but even like from the beginning, like when he's fighting the, the mole guy, mole yeah. man or whatever. It is. Oh, he, that's what I and said. He's like, before, he that? like does, you know, he saves like whatever city hall, yeah. but then he's like, Oh, got a blast. And then he like gets out of there. Yeah. You know, like, I think uh, he is clearly like sort of the, the, the best, superhero in that sort of like yeah because like everybody's like struggling with their powers and stuff and like yeah. trying to figure out but what they're you know the extent of what they can do and he's like yeah. a master of he's whatever a master. it is and then i think what's cool too is that elastigirl is a master as well like she yeah right she has this almost like batman like detective skill and like yeah. her master of like uh piling stuff too yep. but then also being like that chase scene where she's on the motorbike and she just like more than once splits the bike and uses and her like power catap- to like catapult herself. was so cool and yeah. so like cool like in the way that they drew it and presented it too was like this is great i've never seen this before yeah, yeah. she was awesome and i loved how like yeah she was basically like a batman like detective like yeah. she i thought in this movie especially i think the two of them are much more interesting than like mr incredible and that's maybe just my feeling on superheroes. Like I, I Superman's great, but Superman is so like one dimensional. De- yeah. And no matter how hard writers try and change him, he's going to be like, the same. Most yes. He's time. human. And he like has all the human emotions and he's and whatever has he's heart. Human. Yeah. But he's like, not. Nah, he's super know. strong and yeah, he's yeah. near indestructible and you always bring him back. And it's the same with Mr. Incredible. You're like, okay, he's basically unkillable. Give him something he's not good at, like being a parent. Yep. And he he became way more interesting to me. All of a sudden, he had like all this depth that maybe in the first movie he where you knew he he had and he didn't have. That's the thing. They sort of poked at it. You know, they were like, you know, he's not a great. He struggles with uh, having a real job, and he he struggles with being a parent because really that's not what he wants to do. He wants to be a superhero, and he wants to like wait in his car listening to the police scanners. Yep. Right. But he ends up getting what he wants. So in this sense, it's like he doesn't necessarily want to be the one that takes the 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 bench, right, for Elastigirl. But he but does it. He does because it because he has to. But also yes. because he wants to prove Elastigirl. So all of a sudden, we have him making a sacrifice. We have him doing something that he's not great at. We have him sort of figuring everything out as like a parent, as someone who's not in the spotlight. You know. We, we see that struggle yeah. through the entire thing. And I think that was one of the most interesting things about... Yeah, it was. It was. His character, the story, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, even with the kids. Yeah, the kids They want to be superheroes. Because, she like, denounces being a superhero. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, and then, yeah, like, I think Dash and um, Violet are so... Like, they work... They're like the classic, like, Wonder Twin type thing where they're yeah. like... They work really well together and, like pretty okay like when they're not Separately, together yeah. yeah but and they both are like interesting enough powers they were fine and i think the focus isn't necessarily supposed to be on them it's supposed to be them as a group yeah and they work so much better like bouncing off of each other and like even when they're in the incredible car incredible mobile or whatever it is <laughs> yeah 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 a credit card actually sounds <laughs> like credit a, card that sounds like <laughs> a really bad credit card <laughs> um they like when they're trying to figure out how to like where to go or yeah. like uh how to use the car it's so great to see them like bouncing off each other like yeah. i didn't do it yeah you did like that sort of stuff like just that banter is so good that's what i think the movie does super well too is they do like the 
the kids talking at the same time. You know, like, yeah, and like literally that, feeling overwhelmed by that can everything get annoying, but it does in such a, a it, funny I way. I think it right? does, like, yeah, in an entertaining way. And then my the one thing I had seen, heard, listened to, whatever, watched uh, <laughs> before this movie was that maybe Jack Jack was going to be like the next Minions. Oh, and I was like kind of apprehensive about this movie because like you see like some of the trailers and you're like, fuck yeah, maybe he is. Maybe they're just going to make him like just sort of that laughing stock the entire movie and he has no depth or anything. He really doesn't play an important part, but he's there to make jokes. He wasn't. No, I actually really enjoyed Jack Jack's inclusion and whatever development that he had throughout the entire movie. Yeah, exactly. Like him and Edna was great and that was really funny and like, I love that they didn't spend a ton of time on that either. No. They're just like Edna and him get along. And, and now realizes. Really funny, yeah. And that's it. She realizes that, oh, this is not just me yeah. babysitting someone. He comes back the next day. And he's voila, like a different you know, baby. Like, yeah. It's a different baby. Yeah. And then like figuring out the powers and then how to like control those powers is interesting. And then he plays a part in the plot and like them getting caught and stuff. So he like to, actually does play a part and i love that he doesn't just all of a sudden know how to control his powers oh yeah he still is like struggling not struggling because he's a baby like he just kind of like does it whenever yeah because he doesn't know and like i love that that gets them into like some of the plot points in the movie like almost getting caught by that other like the mind controlled team but i loved that and like how he wasn't super overplayed yeah i like that just enough and they were I had a feeling that they were setting it up because that felt like a B plot. You know, it was like, like a C plot. It was more like a yeah. C plot because like B plot would be him struggling as a dad. Yeah. And like being a parent. Yeah. So like the C plot felt like they were like, okay, we're going to, we're introducing like the baby's getting powers. You know, everybody well, knows about last, it now. They, and they yeah, do do it. Maybe that's one, it. But yeah, like yeah. now everybody knows about yeah, it. Yeah. But I thought they were going to be like, okay, like we're setting this up to be like the thing that, solves all the problems yeah you know all of a sudden he's yeah. like oh they, he's figuring out his power he could have oh he's got like a thing yeah. that like prevents him from basically killing everybody yeah and like i love that the way that they they had him sort of interact with like that plot line yeah was basically he floated into someone yeah i was like yeah. oh see like that's yeah. all he needed you didn't it, need to like, it was overdo it. even when he even when elastic girl like breaks out of the the mind control glasses he helps with the other characters, like the other heroes, but he doesn't, he's not like this Doing wrecking ball yeah. of like, like, yeah, he's just, he's just mad. He He's mad. And then he sort of acknowledges that that's the thing, but like, he isn't going from like here to here. Like he isn't saving the day. Yeah. yeah. Which is good. That's what I liked. Um, and then like talking about my control glasses, the kind villain. of an interesting I, take on it. Eh? I think so. Yeah. The villain I thought was not predictable, but I think you could see it coming from like a mile away. Like I think most people had an idea that maybe she was kind of shady. They hint at it, they foreshadow it so much by literally just having her sit in shadows like a lot of the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like they're like she's the dark and well, mysterious it's funny, like, brother. Jill or after the movie because we all saw the movie together. Like Jill even said she's like it was she like five minutes in. And she, she leaned like, over to me and new. said. She's the bad guy. Yeah. And I remember going like, chill, nah. chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but like she, she called it. And I think like, I already, I don't know necessarily that I was thinking about it, but like you could, when she said that, I was like, yeah, all right. And yeah, she ended up being like a villain. She was like a villain, but not a villain. Like she was yeah. like, what I think is interesting. It's the same with like the vulture and Spider-Man is that like, what makes him an interesting villain is that he doesn't think what he's doing is wrong. Yeah. And it's the same thing for her. She's like, yeah. my parents were killed because of this loose thread to, to superheroes. Fuck superheroes. Let's not bring them back like yeah. my brother's planning on. Let's, you Let's know, just keep things how the way they are. And she, she's like, yeah, that's why. And she's not planning on like killing anybody no, no, at no. the time, but she's like... She really just wants them to not just be there anymore. I mean, she does try to kill everybody at the end, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, When right. they're all on the boat. That's right, yeah. yeah. But, tries to run them into the boat and then kill people on the shore. Yeah, so, so she, she is a right. villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. But, but uh, yeah. the idea is that she's not necessarily acting on the same motivations as, say, like someone who wants to take over the world because everybody sucks and they just want to be on the planet by themselves or yeah. something, right? Like, it's yeah. not to that crazy extent. It's like 
she saw the the point of her parents dying instead of calling 911 and going to the panic room yeah she, they decide or he decided to, to use like a yeah a hotline or whatever yeah, yeah. and it didn't work yeah so and she connects those two where he does the opposite and he connects which i thought was interesting them too. not yeah it was an interesting dynamic them not coming because they were outlawed so yeah. he's like well if they weren't outlawed they could have saved my parents exactly so that was an interesting dynamic that made it way more like all right yeah that's, those are both interesting those are both believable steps to take depending on your outlook on life yeah which is great it's funny because i actually thought uh bob odenkirk's character the brother yeah i thought he was the villain for a few times because i thought he was just the over the top he was that's just so I, over yeah, the top but yeah. i thought his whole motivation for bringing the superheroes back or sorry not the motivation but like he would bring them back and then he's like oh how do i how do i do this in a controlled sort of yeah idea oh i know i'll set i'll i'll create a uh villain Oh, and I'll have it. them battle this villain, totally even though I have full so control you didn't over think the he villain. Was the villain, you just thought that he created a scenario to bring them back by creating a villain. Yeah, all right. Because I, I was like, sick, I was like, Screen <laughs> Slaver is kind of a la- like. I thought it was a funny name. Like, yeah. I just thought everything was pointing to him being like, right. I want these all to come back, but you know, I I need like a villain. There's no real villain, yeah. so I'm just gonna like create the scenario. Yeah. But then it, it sort of was like, I as guess, the movie continued. Yeah. I could see that because like when they're at the train event yeah um he's just so excited his idea to be in the city yeah it's his idea not necessarily go. well no because like she's just sitting in a place oh yeah scanner. and then she hears it like yeah, she, they, hears yeah it. they both hear it, and then they're like okay like better go down there so like he could have planned that but yeah i could see that being like a logical jump and that would have been fine too i would have been into that because yeah. that's like a funny way of being like yes we need superheroes but like we we don't need them because there's no villains yeah. around. So he was like, let's make a villain. And then that completely like, re- defeats the purpose of even having superheroes. Yeah, in the it first just place. creates the villain out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. I liked her, um, even though she was like, like you could see it coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought the whole idea was cool, though. Like, you know, she's like sort of a tech genius or whatever. It's a very 21st century kind of thing. Like, yeah. for her to be like, what's her power? Oh, she's super good at tech. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, it, it, it's a it very is, like, yeah. it's a contrived idea. Yeah, totally. Like, of like just a character. Like, she's I, a well, hacker lady, and to yeah. be fair, all of the heroes and villains and stuff are based on like real existing comic book heroes and yeah. stuff. Oh, like, yeah. they're all like drawn from that. So, like, I could I mean, see uh, that being. Uh, like, Violet's basically, you know, um, what's her face? Invisible woman. Invisible woman. Yeah, she can do the shield. She can turn invisible. Yeah. Dash is. I mean, almost Quicksilver exactly Flash, like whatever, yeah. Flash. I mean, his name is almost the same. Yeah. So, yeah, like there's obviously the like, connection between yeah. the two. And so there's going to be like connections between other characters. Even I want... though I think Frozone Iceman. is like uh, Iceman. Yeah. yeah but yeah, like, I, I do like that they even like have like <laughs> Iceman and Frozone are sort of like secondary characters in yeah, their in, sort of respected their, universes yeah, anyway. So it's fun to like, it's easy to make that connection as well. Yeah. But yeah, I, I um, what were we talking about? Oh, basically, I want to go back to like the superheroes that they brought in, because I thought that was an interesting thing to do too. Because in the other movie, they sort of do like the remember in like Watchmen, and they do like the flashbacks, and they're like going through like the title sequence, and they just show like pictures of old superheroes. Yeah, I was actually gonna say a I lot think of this that's movie. Only what they did in like the first Incredibles. I think they just showed they pictures of like. Yeah. Mr. Incredible, like with other people, yeah, I think or like that's the it. I gotta watch it again, but I think you're or something right. like, like that. I think or getting arrested and stuff. or getting arrested, yeah, yeah. I think a lot the the main plot of that first movie, like of the superhero registration, although it's not like an overdone thing, because you have well, it is an overdone thing. Civil a War, bit, yeah. like in the comics, I mean and Watchmen, stuff. yeah. But a lot of that's based off Watchmen, I think. I think so, and even this one, it's like slightly based off Watchmen, yeah. Totally. And like I'm okay with that. Like that's a great book to base things off. It's of. a great thing. It's a yeah. Like, it's exactly, a very yeah. like even though it's like a little bit older now, it's aged incredibly well. Yeah. yeah. Especially with like today's political landscape. Mm-hmm. But like yeah, it works so well, and it's fine to have that sort of as your basis. Like yeah. that, it works. Like it's great. Um. Yeah. No. I. I think. Anyway. <laughs> I. I think that like uh, this movie was. 
lived up to the hype of the first one. Yeah. I think a lot of yeah. people going into it were like, uh, like it's going to be a nostalgia, like kind of what we said at the beginning, really, yep. that we were worried that it was going to be like a thing targeted only at your nostalgia and your love for the first one. Yeah. But was, wasn't really going to give you anything in, cer- in terms of like character development, you know, depth, whatever, theme. Everything was going to be almost exactly the same. Yep. And to a degree, the, the plot line yeah. was similar. similar. Yep. However, I think it was a great movie on its own. Yeah, I do too. I think that was my fear as well, is that this was just going to be like, eh? Do you remember Mr. Incredible? Yeah. yeah. Elastic Girl? And then, and Frozen? And like, to go into this and be like, yeah, they're here too, but yeah. also there's going to be something else going on. Yeah. I thought that was great. Also, what year is this movie set in? I have no idea. I, get, I saw like an Easter egg video and it was like 1960 something. And then they talked to Brad Bird and they were like, I shouldn't have included that because I didn't think people were going to read it. And oh. then, but like, there's clearly like the one cartoon that they play. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Comes out like later or yeah. something. This I actually the love jump, that cartoon. The jump is like too great. ridiculous or something. Anyways, I don't know. I think this is set. I like the idea. I that, think it's set in the future. I like the idea. Dimension. Yeah. Alternate dimension. I like that it's ambiguous. I yeah, like I that do weird, I like, it's fine. I don't there's things that really. hint to them having like sort of like. Uh, I mean, like whole Superior. Bob Odenkirk's entire like, uh, like building and and like the cool boat yeah. that he has. Yeah, that's all like current futuristic day futuristic shit, stuff. Yeah. But then like the cars they drive and like the you know and, like the train. So I do like that. It's almost like this um, sort of like I don't want to say um, steampunk kind of style. But I know what you mean. Like but, that future. Like it's. It's futuristic like that, in the past kind of look like yeah, something that it's you would that, go to like the expo 86 and, and they'd be like see this. look at the year 2000 yeah and that's just yeah no i, I get love that. That's that, exactly that what it is i think i love that idea yep um i think that's exactly what they're probably going for is that like 50s futuristic look yeah um yeah. someone from the 50s would assume the future what would that look, future yeah. would look like i really liked it i think despite what yeah you maybe like heard on like audience scores and stuff I thought it was great. I thought it was I great really too. I liked it. I yeah. think uh, one of my favorite movies so far this year. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what would you give it? Yeah. I was just thinking that. So, I don't know because like I really liked it and I don't think there was a ton that I had a problem with yeah, outside yeah. of that beginning bit. But like. But it I really think, that had nothing to do with the movie itself. Yeah. It was I just think, sort uh, of like how I felt about going into it. Yeah. I was excited about it. Don't get me wrong. I was very excited about the movie. But. I, I don't necessarily, like, I, you know, I mean, like, I wasn't sure about the the process of it. Yep. I would give it 6.5 out of 7. Yeah. You know what? I 92%. 92%. That's pretty good. Because I, I didn't just use a calculator to figure yeah, that right. out. Yeah, right. You just knew that from the beginning. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I think I that's think a good that's number. Because, like, I loved it, and but, like, I don't think it was perfect. I definitely think there were some things that maybe I couldn't, like, what were we talking about with the villain and stuff? Mm-hmm. But, like... Yeah, no, it was a near perfect for me. So, uh, uh, of the movies then that we, or sorry, I guess my rating would be, I, I think I would do the same, six and a half out of seven. Yeah, I have got to watch I the original it. Incredibles again though. Yeah, I, I, I saw I like it. clips of it. I'm like, I don't remember it looking like this at all. I know, right? It's like not. <laughs> it's the like animation's that, not quite like as good as you remember bully, it. It's like the bully from Toy Story One. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, oh kind my god, that's not a real human. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. could have been even like around the same time too. Eh? It's pretty close. Um. Yeah, six and a half out of seven, I think, is a good score. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, so of the movies then we, that we've seen or that we've talked about, what what is your – is this your top one then? Because uh, we've seen – Yeah. We've talked no. about – Well, I don't know because a, like uh, – Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. Um, Deadpool 2, Solo, uh, Ocean's 8, and then Incredibles 2. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would too. Yeah. God, that's it, eh? <laughs> yeah. That's all we've talked about I've really. I've not really been like – I think it's been a lot of like appeasing the fanboy type, mm. fan person type year in movies. Yeah. And maybe that's just Hollywood now, but like. Yeah, pretty much. That's it, eh? Like, yeah. yeah, this is the best out of those. And I'm excited sort of for that like Oscar run of really great movies, like the really like. In- now I sound like an asshole, but yeah, like better movies, be- more interesting movies. Like, I feel like that's, we're coming into that time now. Like there's yep. sort of been a few of those already. Yep. Like the Ethan Hawke movie and yep. the, um, Joaquin Phoenix movie. Yep. Uh, he's got a couple that have come out. So we'll probably get 
start talking about some of those ones pretty soon. Ant Man and the Wasp comes out soon. Too. Oh yeah, I'm excited for that. So, I yeah. didn't realize Mission Impossible comes out so late. They've I know been advertising that movie for yeah. so long. I thought it was already out. To be honest, I didn't realize that it was hadn't come out yet. Um, yeah, I, I think that's it, right? Yeah, covered it all. Yeah. If you wanna hit us up on Twitter, it's at TwinSpeaks underscore. Tweet at us, please. <laughs> yeah, we don't get anything. That's well, I shouldn't have said that. That sounds like nobody listens to this. Uh, yeah. There is a handful it's of early. people out there that listen to this. Yeah, and we appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah, this has been uh, first watch, first listen of Incredibles two, um, as well as a bunch of new stuff. Um, yeah, you can find me at, at on Twitter at Kid Combo underscore. Andrew's on on social media stuff at Andemonium. Yep. Like he said, Twin Speaks underscore. Um, thanks.